high. All right, this is a big one. Um, this is like a life's worth of momentum. Uh, I don't quite know what I'm going to say. I can't be scared anymore. So, first I want to thank the millions of women who have had to do all the work of disclosing and telling and take all the brunt of, to be the target of all the violence. You have inspired me and you are inspiring me and you are... <clears throat> the hundreds of women who right now are giving me the courage to do this and are behind me going like, do it, do it, do it, do it. The men, there are a few men who are full on supporting me, but very few. But some. Thank you to those of you. So, Childhood sexual abuse, when it happens to you when you're a kid, it, forgive me for this word, but it destroys you. It destroys you. And you have to find what's left and you have to build a life on it. But it makes you completely vulnerable to repeat patterns without knowing that you're doing it. You're just trying to survive in the world and you find the perpetrators and you find the wounded and you repeat the pattern. The part of you that has clear boundaries of like, no, that's not right, or I don't agree with that, those, those parts are broken. They're absent. So we become bad judges of safe, people. So my grandfather was a pedophile. And he took me and my family and he sent a very, very deep shockwave through it. And I found in my 20s, I was very very hard to feel balanced, grounded. I, I didn't have access to that experience. So when I met the guru, I felt a sense of structure and balance. He gave me a lot. It was beautiful. I loved it. I also came in as sort of a non-binary, broken man. So I give him my whole heart. I would have given him everything. That includes my body. I didn't know that. It wasn't conscious. But I think he knew that. Why am I telling you this now? Because this is really scary. He has, he is a serial sexual groomer, I'll say abuser. He has, he has groomed women to be close and intimate with him. And if they set a boundary or have an opinion or don't go along with the program completely, he discards them. And um, he blames them. He takes zero responsibility for the pain that he has caused with any human beings. And he lets them live with their shame. And he casts an absolutely masterful spell so that when you're intimate with him and close with him, it's not even that you don't believe these stories, but these stories do not penetrate. And you're defended against the reality of them by the women and the people who have had this experience um, being completely and utterly erased. And, and I'm seeing this everywhere now. You see it in sports teams. You see it among white supremacists. You see it 
uh, the, gym, the gymnastics with Larry Nasser. You see it everywhere. And my cult experience seems special, but it's not. It's everywhere. It's everywhere where there's a person in power who has power over you and your career and your future. And, and in faith communities, wow. All, so many faith communities where there's pressure to look a certain way and pressure to seem a certain way and pressure to not have certain thoughts. And it goes to the most micro-personal. A woman who's a friend here locally wrote to me and said, like, should I patronize these businesses that are owned by the local community? And I'm like, you know, make your own decision. But I've come to a decision that, no, don't support those businesses. People are being hurt. People have been hurt. I want to thank the few women who are close to me who have done a lot of this work and who are showing me clear boundaries and whose voices have become quite strong. So part of this is reconciling with my own past. While I was with the Sufis, I was encouraged to not tell my story and not rely on my story and not be my story because I'm not my story. Well, I just put everything on hold and now I'm back and now I have to go like, shit, you know, all the shit is still inside me. All the trauma, all the, it's still right there. I still have broken boundaries, very broken boundaries. And um, perhaps this is, perhaps that is what's giving me the ability to tell you the story right now. It's very hard to speak the truth. Uh, sexually abusive people um, create an entire culture around themselves, and that's what my grandfather did, of denial and uh, hiding and secrecy. No more secrets. One of the things that I've discovered is that um, I've been around the guru there's a real feeling even in my own family of being kind of like well there's good there too there's good there don't reject the good and i've had this feeling yesterday of like no when somebody can do this to other people and discard them there is no good that person is 100 percent poisoned and that's why i can say to you you know, no, go to a different restaurant. These stories need to come out. People have been hurt. And it will stop someday. That's all for now. Thank you. All your messages of support are helping. They're helping me get clear, helping me speak the truth, all that good stuff. I love you. Bye.